my childhood, it was fun for me. <laughs> I have a good childhood, or what you consider like middle class. I live in the capital of Peru, which is a very large city. It's uh, 11 million people in that city, so it's a very large city. So there were some things that were limited because at the time, most of my younger years uh, was the government, the Peruvian government was run by the military and in an attempt to uh, socialist, socialism experiment. So there were not almost no imports from other countries. Uh, uh, you have to buy lo local producers and the quality was not bad. That's something that I remember well that uh, a lot of people used to fly to other countries and then bring suitcases full of stuff that they could sell uh, to other people because that they were not available. Well, and of course you have to bribe the people in the customs so they let you <laughs> get in with your goods. My father at the time uh, was, he had, he's a lawyer, but he had different jobs and he was a lawyer. Uh, he has a different job. And one was that they, they had a cargo air, airline company that flew to, from the jungle in Peru to, uh, I think it was Fort Lauderdale, uh, uh, and that business. The initial reason w was that I wanted to do a, a graduate degree and there were not many options in Peru for that and it, at least in my field in economics I, I felt that uh, the best place to do it was the U.S. So I applied like to another university to do my master's and PhD. That was different because I get, got married right before coming to the U.S. so I came with my wife. We had two kids during my when we were doing the when I was doing the PhD, and then we we moved to Washington D.C. I, I was opportunity for some jobs and stuff there, and then then they make me this offer in Peru that it was very attractive, so <laughs> I took it. <laughs> so I went back, but I always wanted the idea of teaching, in, in, and it just was by chance that I I came for a visit to Northern to talk to a colleague because I was going to do something similar in Peru. And then I found out that they were looking somebody in that specific topic in that area. So I went back and I asked my wife who we talked and said, our kids went to the American school in Peru because they were Americans since they were born here. And they were set up after finishing uh, high school, they were going to come to the U.S., move to the U.S. So my wife was like, well, if they're going to be in the U.S., let's let's go and move there to, so to have them closer so i decided to apply and i was lucky that i got the job and we moved here there was one professor in one class that the guy just walked in sat down in, in front of his desk and he'll just cross the arms and they start talking and that was the lecture he never used the blackboard he never used anything he just talked and talked and talk. I had to ask that guy if I could take tape his class. <laughs> I had to buy a tape recorder and tape his class because it was very difficult to follow, you know. Or the other thing that I was surprised me is like my impression when I moved here is Americans don't know geography, uh, you know, that where, where countries are because I know, you know, and, and it's not that I know my area, but I know countries in here. I know where they are, mm -hmm. the country. And, People were confused, were, you know, like Peru and where is that? You know, like, oh, but, uh, so, but I was surprised that they didn't know things. And there were some things that they were, they, the image of them, of, of us was more like a stereotype, you know, like, a, and you see it in some movies that you go and you see donkeys walk, walking in the middle of the street, every, everybody buys things in the, open markets, there are no stores, but you could just go and buy things there. You know, I yeah, I felt that they were thinking that they were asking you questions that were, well, they're thinking that this is how they, you know. We have Hillfinger uh, uh, stores in, in Lima, so, you know. <laughs> but it was funny that, that they assumed that. When I moved with my wife, and that was my, the first time for my wife, we were invited to a party. But when you say party in Peru, almost any party is a dancing party. There is no 
God is a for us is like a God, you're talk, talking about a gathering. So my wife went we went to this first party and my wife was like, when is the music gonna start? They don't even place to dance. What, what? You know, he was completely confused with that. And what's going on here? Because it, either you don't call it a party, it's just a gathering. Dancing parties happen all the time. Somebody's birthday is gonna be a dancing party. Somebody's whatever. So there are many, I mean, you you will have dancing parties like many times in, in, in a year. Here it could be even several years before we go to a dancing pool. Maybe in a, if we have a wedding or something like that, we will have that chance. There were some things that I, I, I had visited the US before, but it was as a tourist, so you just go run around and you don't. There are a few things that may seem strange to you, but for example, see a blonde guy with blue eyes doing manual labor. It looked weird coming from Peru. And most people that have the, that look uh, have money. So that was a, a, a that was something, oh, well, <laughs> you know, like when I use public transportation in Peru, I always like going into the back of the bus. Mm -hmm. And in Philadelphia, when I took the bus, I realized at some point that why only black people around me? Although there was no segregation anymore, but it was clear, you could, you could see clearly that the white people stay in the front and the black people stay in the back. And I'm not white, completely white if you want to call it, but I got looks from the uh, black people around me like, like, what are you doing here, you know? But I, I decided not to, you know, to just keep doing it and uh, didn't, I didn't mind that. One thing that I miss a lot is the food. The food is very important to us and that's something that you miss, especially here. When we live, for example, when the years that I spent in Washington, D.C., there were plenty of rest Peruvian restaurants all over the place and you can pick what type of Peruvian food you wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, it's different in a very large city. Here, we have to go to Madison or Milwaukee maybe to have a Peruvian restaurant, find a Peruvian restaurant. We can do it in, if we want to. Uh, or my wife tries to. I'm not good at making these things, so my wife can sometimes make it happen. The other thing was family. Although maybe in Marquette, with some people, I see some families that, is, some people that stay here and they are very well connected to the whole, to all the relatives and everybody is here. Uh, in my experience, I, I'm close with my brother. I talk to him, but. I know I'm not going to see him very often. So I, I I miss that for sure. Only when somebody in the family gets married or something, everybody gets together. Uh, it happened last year when my son got married. I got to see a little bunch of people. Uh, not all were able to come, but you, you can see. And at that point, at that, see, being in that situation, is like, well, it used to be that we did this very often, you know, like having this these celebrations very often and now you don't have it.